Okay, I've got some lines jumbo sheets. These are warm up. Now I've got a stack of these. These are massive. These sheets are three meters by about two point seven meters, or two point three. Anyway, they're big. So I was wondering, what am I doing with all these sheets here? And I thought to myself, hmm, I know. I'll make some workshops. So I'm going to make some of these thin ones. Everyone's going for these design ones. Now, as you may have noticed, they're very expensive for thin ones. So I'm going to make some ones and I'll show you how to make them cheap. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make the cheap worktops using half decent stuff. So what we've got, we've got a piece of chip wall there, that's 18 mil, that's by about three meters. There's a few little scratches and chips in it, but it doesn't matter because we're going to cut them. We're going to, as you can see, we're going to trim them off. Um, this is just some waste chip wall he had. And as you may know, his price of stuff's gone through the ceiling at the moment, timber and plywood and stuff. So make use of what we've got. Now we've also got the jumbo sheets to show you. This is a walnut one, wengi one. It's called wengi actually. When you wall, not whatever. Um, this is the, the grain one, the wood grain one. It's actually quite a good uh, product, actually. But like I said in the video, <laughs> I need to do some of these sheets because I've got about 40 of them. Um, if you're interested, you can buy them actually singly. You could actually use these uh, if you're doing cubicles, you know, um, restaurant cubicles, bars, and stuff. Um, you, this is quite a good veneer, that. So that's an option for you. Use it for anything desks, worktops, whatever you want to use it for. Your little barn, your little uh, tiki barn, your back garden, whatever you want to do. Now, <clears throat> back to the video. I'm going to show you how to laminate it. Now, in the other video, I showed you you could you had two options to use for your resin, which was that, which was the industrial bowl, and also the stick attack one. Now, you could actually use the small ones because there is enough in that to do a worktop easily. Um, obviously it's going to take a little bit longer to do um, in this video I'm going to be using a spray gun as you can see um, obviously for DIYs smart attack is the uh, better option for you I think it's about a tenner a bottle you probably get it cheaper somewhere else if you've got a few bottles of it well, that's another option right so let's show you how to do it ok so your best first option would be the laminate if you've got something for space which I'm a little bit here what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, use Go with the laminate first, flat to one side, and then I'm going to go with the board. Now make sure the laminate is actually wider than your board. You don't want it exactly because you're going to run off a little bit, and those are possibly going to run off, and then you've been stuffed then. Because once it's stuck, it's stuck. Right, so let's go for it. I'm using the bottle. It comes out the bottom. There you go. You see that? It comes out like a cobweb. In the other videos, hope you can hear me down here. One down here. This is the clear glue. These are the colours. And this is going to be the same process as we just had as well. Nibble them out. Doesn't take long to do. Once you cut your board and your laminate, it doesn't really take long to do this. I'm going to give it a good coat, you hear me down there? Give it a good coat like that. It doesn't have to be saturated, because you're going to be doing both sides, you're going to do this, and you're going to be on the board as well. So if you miss one side, you catch it on the other one. I'm just showing the vid. As you can see, it's like a cobweb. So I'll give that a coat. Okay. Right now I'm going to put this to one side. I'll do the top. Obviously this time I put some cardboard down on. I don't even mess with bugger. I can't be bothered, but I don't want to go on the way the tops. Right, same process again. It's hard to see this time because it's going to just clear stuff on the board. Actually, you can buy blues and colours might be easy to use for you. Got all the edges, the edges are most important. Now 
I want to just give it a few minutes to dry off and set long. And if you've got any ideas about using the Evo stick for this process, forget it. Because that stuff's horrible to use. And the problem with that stuff is, <laughs> you do just get a bit lumpy. It takes forever to put it on, get it all smooth. And also, unlike this stuff, once it touches surface to surface, it is stuck, it is going nowhere. This one, you can, if you get, put it on the wrong, start, start off wrong way, you can, and I'll only work the glue step, you can kind of move it a little bit, not much, but you have got a chance. You will see it, no chance. That's why, to avoid with that stuff, so, get about using that stuff. You're a crazy person to use that. I mean, you can use it in edges on worktops, the small areas, but you not use that for anything else. Right, so work it off. There you go. Okay, you can hardly see it, obviously, because it's clear. But it's on there. I've done both sides, so you'll get it either. Alright, so now we'll do, I'm going to leave it for a couple of minutes. And then we'll get back to the video and show you how to put the laminate down. Okay, so we've glued both sides and now we're going to put the laminate on. This is probably going to be the most tricky bit of the operation. Um, now don't forget I've made this actually laminate. I think I made it about 20mm either side wider. So obviously if it goes starts coming off at an angle, you're going to lose it and you end up with... Well basically you're not going to put a workshop. You're going to miss it. You're going to miss the edge. Right, so what we need to do, this is actually curving, the way the laminate is, it's curving. So I need to get the curve out. And it's a flat, what am I doing? We'll roll it on. Let's turn it over. Make sure it doesn't stick. I want to keep the back high all the time, so it's not sticking. Keep it back up in the air. Two handed operator, you've got two more, someone else to be hand, that's a better option for you. A lot easier. <clears throat> so I'm just going to put my hands on it. So that's basically it, as you can see. So I've got a board, the board's about 620, 25. As you see, it's overlapped a little bit. That's basically it. Now what I'm going to do, trim it up. And I'm going to edge it. I've got some edging somewhere. Finish it off. And uh, it'll have your work top. I think that limit's about 3 meters and 50. So the board's about, I think it's about 3.2 the board. A bit longer. Sorry. Okay, so as I've shown you in the other videos, I've got a file. I did it could have been a square one, but it's got a bit of an edge on it there, so that's fine. So we'll just clean it off. Now you could use a trim router here. I don't suspect most people don't have one, so I'm just going to do it the easy way. And this is just a quick. I suppose if you're doing them all day long, you're probably better off being set up with a, a trim now for this purpose. File is fine. 
I just want to keep it at an angle. Like a cutting action, like a saw, like you're in a saw blade. I won't bore you with the rest of the details. I'll finish that off, come back to the video. Okay, as you can see, I've uh, trimmed it off. I didn't want to bore you with the details of filing it down. You've seen plenty of videos before, I'm sure. Ain't rocket science. Okay, okay. So what I've done is I've took over the file and just got some sandpaper and cleaned it off. There you go, dead interesting. Now then, I'm going to edge the front now. I've got some laminate somewhere edging, which I cut before. Uh, I've got a bit of overspray when I sprayed before. Oh, I'll go over that again, it should be alright. Um, that's the trim, I cut some before. That's going to go in the edge, that's about 25 30 now. So I've got a little bit of an overhang again. Like I said, make sure you've got a bit of an overhang. Um, you don't be running out again. Alright, so I'll do that now. I'll set it up for you, show you. Okay, now for this purpose, I'm going to use the small can because it's smaller to use. And I've got a bit left, I'm going to use it up before it goes off. But I want to do the edge, it's probably a little bit easier to get the edge with that. The fan's not as big on it. Now, unlike the other videos, I've covered up this time. Put some cardboard, I don't get any overspray. Don't worry about the overspray because you can clean it off with some uh, cellulose thinners, paint thinners. Right, here we go. I'm using blue, as you can see. This should colour blind. And you get most of it on the works up underneath. Great. Let's pull it over a little bit. Yeah, hey, mucky bugger. Right, let's try that again. Light spray on the top there. Let's see. That'll do, a bit more. There you go, right. Let's find our laminate. Where's our laminate gone? Dig it out. Little piece somewhere that I cut. Again, it's running out this can, so I've used it on quite a few jobs. There's a watch left in the can. Good shake, it just blocks up. Not so sure it's blocked up all the uh, Gas is going. Well, that's one side. Back to the clear stuff. You know, I've had this bottle for a few years now, and I'm um, surprised it, it never, never really closed. Just clean the front off. It's fine, the holes never clogs up or dries out. Pretty good stuff, huh? I've done that for a few years. Does the trick. Right, let's get it down in here. Anyway, I'll finish it off. I'll come back to it and boy, rest it details. You know, you know what a crack. Okay, so, glued that bit. Bit of blue, bit of clay. That is all blue. There you go, like right down. Okay, get the gist. So now I'm going to stick it on. Uh, I'll stick it on now. Let's see if I can put this camera so we get a better, a better clear view. Let's have a look. That's what we can do. Right, so keep it away, one edge away. Um, so I'm going to do this one. Right, so I'm going to pull a little bit. Keep the glue off the floor. Right, now remember what I said in the other videos? Use your fingers to gauge it. Sort of kind of central, so we've got an old overlap. Just keep it down, you just feel it with your fingers. Make sure 
actually got an overlap in my way. Kind of get it on first, and then once you've got it on, in that kind of place, just come back with a cloth. in a minute, show the results, but well, really, there ain't that much to it though, once you've got all your materials cut, literally, you do it in about half an hour, that's it, et voila. Okay, I'm just going to show you a quick little clip in the video of filing it, just in case you've not seen it in the other videos, let's see if I can get a better angle of this. So, as again, file as you can see I'm cutting up at an angle very easy to do saw action that is basically it um, I'm gonna finish it off clean it with some thinners and show you the finished result okay so I've cleaned it off as you can see I've used some uh, Thinners there, that gets all the glue off pretty quick, as you can see. Now, I'll just show you something here. When you when you cut laminate and you file it off, you're going to get like a white edge, a light edge. What you can do is, if it's brown, use a brown felt tip. Unlike me, I've got a black one, so I'm a brown one. So I've used a black one, but I'm just giving you the idea, the purpose of it. And basically, what you do is, you're going to get rid of that edge there. So you just get, just use your fingers as a guide. As you see, um, obviously when you use a brown fontic pen for a brown workshop, etc. I don't have any brown workshops, but you get the general idea. And that'll get rid of that white edge there, that white mark. Now on the um, kitchen workshops that you buy from these fancy showrooms, they have a matching edging on it. Now it's a rubber, I think they're made of plastic or something. So that glues onto the front there. Um, so it's not as obvious because obviously it matches the worktop for this purpose we're making a cheap worktop um, but yeah it does the job as you can see looks pretty smart think how much money you're going to save yourself doing this process and theoretically speaking you can get any colour you want really I mean we've got literally got hundreds of work, layer laminate sheets there you can make your own worktops no problem at all and you can get the thin ones as well I mean I know they run into the few hundred quid for a three metre so if you're using these jumbo sheets, you're going to get about three worktops out of that uh, jumbo sheet, for instance. We've got some more laminate sheets. Uh, you probably get two worktops out of that. Anyway, each to his own. There you go. Et voila. That's how you do it. Ain't rocket science. You shouldn't have any problems doing that at all. Um, dead easy to do. And that's it.